Hi, and welcome to another PowerShell quick tip video. This video will actually build on our last quick tip video that we used the DS internal tools to build ourselves a Active Directory password quality report. And we were actually able to find two users that we found in our dictionary of passwords that we got from our GitHub and then we added some passwords in. So what we're actually gonna do today is take those two accounts that we found in the reports and actually run them through a script that we're going to write to find what password in that dictionary that they're using as a password. This can be either used as a tactic to really pressure that user to change their password or really just to see what their passwords are. Now, of course, this can be used as an exploit. So I will just say a disclaimer that this should only be used on test environments or your own environment that you have permissions to do this on and really should be used to protect your environment. You can definitely use this scan weekly or daily to be able to really keep your Active Directory clean of any known breached passwords. So let's go ahead and let's just get started by first running this code that we created in the last video. I'll have a link to the previous video in the description. If you guys haven't watched it, it is definitely going to be a helpful video to watch before watching this one, just because a lot of the base here that we're, we've already have written is going to be coming from that video. And it's not too, too long. I think it's only like 10 to 11 minutes. Uh, so that should get you started. So let's go ahead and let's run this code here. And as we can see, we get a nice little report of our Active Directory password quality. And we can see that two accounts, the YT test three has been found in the dictionary and YT test four. So let's go ahead and let's get started in how do we find these passwords out? Well, the nice thing about the report is you can actually store that into a variable. We're gonna store it into a variable called results. Let's go ahead and let's just run this code again. And what's nice is of course, when you store it in a variable, of course you can look at it at any time you really want afterwards, but you can also reference a dot weak password property. And what that comes back, it comes back with the two accounts that were found in our dictionary here. So we have YT test three and YT test four. What I like to do is I like to store those in a variable called AD weak passwords. And then what we need to do is since we want to find out what these passwords were in the dictionary that these accounts have, we also need to actually pull in the content from our weak password file. So let's go ahead and let's create a variable called weak passwords. We're going to make that equal to get content path, and we're going to reference our weak password file path here. And the first thing we want to do is we're going to want to loop through these accounts that were found. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to loop through the accounts. We're going to grab the hash of the password of that account, and then we're going to loop through the passwords till we find that hash. Now, of course, there are other tools that you can do this with, especially with Hashcat or anything else like that. But this is only using PowerShell. So it's using all the tools that are already really built in to your system, especially if you already have the DS internal tools installed. So let's go ahead and let's just do a for each. We're going to do for each account in AD weak passwords, open and close curly brackets. And now we're going to be working inside of those curly brackets. Now, what we want to do is actually just take a look at what the account variable is equal to here. And we're going to see that it is equal to jacked backslash yt test three and jacked backslash yt test four. These are the two accounts that were found. Now, as you can tell, we have our domain and we have our username or our SAM account name. Now, what I really want is I want to grab the SAM account name and I want to store that into a variable here. So we're going to create a variable called SAM account name. We're just going to change the capitalizations here. So we have SAM account name. We're going to make that equal to account dot split. And we're going to split on the backslash here. Now, if you guys have never used the dot split function, let's just take a look at a quick example here. It split that account on the backslash 
So it gives us an array, and our first element is the domain, and our second element is the SAM account name. Since we want the second element, we need to reference that second element, and since arrays are zero-based indexes, we need to look at element one, which is going to grab us the second element. So if we actually just go ahead and run that, we can actually see that it does grab us that second element. So that is perfect. Now what we need to do is get that user password hash. Now we've seen this in the previous video, how to do that with the get80 REPL account. So we're going to store that into a user variable and we're going to do a get80 REPL account with the same account name of account name and our server, we're going to reference our server. Now, of course, you can definitely grab the server that the user belongs to or the domain that the user belongs to with that split. But we already have that server set from our first script here uh, that we wrote in the last video. And we have that in the server variable. So we're just going to use that for now. And now if we go ahead and we run these two lines of code here, and we go look at our user object, which is gonna be the user object that we got back from the get80 REPL account. We're gonna see that we do get all that information that we saw in the last video, including that NT hash. Now, one thing about the get80 REPL account is the dot notation to get the NT hash isn't necessarily super obvious. Now you can do a dot NT hash here, but it is in a byte array. Now, of course, you can definitely convert that byte array into what you need. What I actually like to do a little bit more, um, it may be a little bit more lines of code, but it is just a good practice to use this in case you ever need to in a different scenario. But what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna create a variable called user hash, and we're gonna make that equal to user Type that to format-custom here, and we're going to have a view, and then you should have a view called nt-hash. Now, if we actually just look at what this gives us, this will give us the hash, the nt-hash of that user's password here. Now you're going to see that there's some spaces above and below, and that's because it actually gives it back to us in similarly to an array, but it is its own format. So what we actually need to do is pump that out to a file, trim those empty lines and get that data back. So let's go ahead and let's create a hash file path here. And what I like to do is I like to just go ahead, create the hash file that I want to use. So we're going to create a hash.txt, copy that path here, paste that in. I'm going to add some double quotes here to make that a string. So once we have our hash file path here, all we need to do is do a user hash. We're going to out file to the hash file path. And then what we want to do so if we actually go ahead and we pump this out here, go ahead and we look at the hash, we're gonna see that we have an empty line above and an empty line below, and also a fourth line here. All we really want is what's on the second line. So what we actually need to do is build something that will take the content of this file, empty out the empty lines, and leave us only the hash. So what we actually want to do here, and this is very, very important. You cannot leave these parentheses out. And I will actually show you guys without the parentheses first, um, just to show you guys what will happen if you guys don't put the parentheses. So we're going to get content on the hash file path. We're going to pipe that to where open and close curly bracket dollar sign underscore, which is going to be um, the line there and we're going to do a dot trim open and close uh, parentheses not equal an empty string so double quote double quote and then we're going to pipe that to set content hash file path now if we go ahead and we run this here 
we're going to see that we get an error saying that the process cannot access the file because it is being used by another process. So if we actually just go ahead and add the parentheses on the get content here and run those same lines, we do not get that error because it is contained within those parentheses. So that's what we want to do there. So once we have that, then we can then create our hash variable, which is going to be equal get content on that hash file path. So if we go ahead and we run this now and we go look at our hash, we can see we get one nice line just with the hash. If we look at the hash.txt, we have one line. We do have a second line just by default. It is going to be there in the Visual Studio text editor but it is just one line as we can tell by the get content. So that is actually perfect. So once we actually have our hash here, let me just shrink this and shrink this. Once we actually have our hash from our user, what we need to do is loop through all those passwords in that text file and see if we can find what password that they actually have. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to do a for each weak password in weak passwords here open and close curly brackets and then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take that password and convert it to an empty hash because we have the hash of the user password but we know that our weak passwords file is still in plain text so luckily the ds internal tools has this commandlet called convert to nt hash but when we go to use it, it does require the password to be in a secure string. So what I like to do is just create a variable called secure weak password. And we're going to make that equal to weak password. Type that to convert to secure string and use the parameters as plain text and force. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a weak password hash variable and we're going to make that equal to convert to nt hash and we're going to pass in our secure weak password into the password parameter and then all we need to do is then check if our weak password hash is equal to our user's password hash so we're just going to want to do it if hash dash eq for equals the weak password hash, open and close curly bracket. And then we're gonna do a write output. And then we're gonna do a set of double quotes here. We're gonna do Sam account, let's just make that nice. Sam account name has password, weak password. And now if we go ahead and we actually run all of this code, oh, and one little thing here, if we don't write this, even once it finds the password, it will keep looping through the password. So to make this code a little bit faster, as soon as it finds the password, it's gonna break out of this loop and then go to the next user. So now let's go ahead and let's run this code here. Now we're gonna see that it does work, but we're gonna have something that pops up on the screen here. So we already found our first account's password is test123456 exclamation mark. And we get this really nice and ugly red text for convert to secure string um, because the string is empty. So what's nice is the convert to secure string, what we can actually do is make it very, very nice and just have an error action. The convert to NT hash does not really have a nice error action. So for the convert to secure string, all we need to do is add an error action of silently continue. And then what I like to do here is add a if statement. So if secure weak password, so if the secure weak password exists, then go ahead and get the weak password hash here. And if we go ahead and we run this now, we will see we found our first YT test free password again, still comes up as test one, two, three, four, five, six exclamation mark. And we're just going to wait a little bit longer. It does take some time because it does have to iterate through all those passwords. 
And there we go. YT test four has password programmer one, two, three, four, five exclamation mark. We got no errors in that code coming up because we have that if statement and we have that error action of silently continue. Now you could definitely wrap that in a try catch as well. There are a bunch of different ways that you can handle those errors. This is just a very quick and easy way to do that and to find out the passwords of those accounts that were in the dictionary. The old DS internals used to have a show plain password um, parameter. They've removed that obviously because it can be used to really exploit the system, but there are still ways that you can definitely write that code yourself like we just did here. If you guys would like to see anything else definitely security related, there are going to be a much bunch more security related uh, PowerShell quick tips coming up as well. Um, but if you guys have anything specific, please let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. Also, hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.